Hey, g'day, how you all going? This is Ian Appleus here, your acrylic guru. Ian Harris from Australia, and welcome to my video channel here. Now, we're up to part two of how to paint a scenery for you beginners. So let's recap where we're up to. We've got our sky done. Now what you can do here is keep up with your sky, work it and work it and work it until you're happy with it. Then you can come on to this stage. So now we're going to put in our masking tape and start getting the second stage, which is the water, all right? Now you can have your water sort of, depending the, the tone you've done your sky, you can have your water a darker tone or a lighter tone or a tropical tone. I'm going for a tropical tone in this one. So the colors will go up right there like that. So you can see the colors that I'm going to use in this tutorial right here, okay? And they're just a suggestion of what colors you can use. They're not a big must that you, you've got to use them, all right? I'll get these off out the way. All righty. So we have got, this is dry. This is what I've done yesterday with you all on, on part one. Now, I've got my masking tape ready and I'm going to mask it up, all right? So come in a bit closer and we'll mask our horizon line. All right, so put your tape where you want your horizon line. I want mine about there. So just to do it very slowly for you, I'm grabbing a pencil and I'm going to mark the top edge of this tape just like that. For those senior citizens who are not too good with their hands, all right? We've got to think of everybody. Now, I'm going to take the tape off and put it above that line there. So that is my horizon line, all right? Now, you want to get that nice and firm. With taping onto a canvas where you're going to paint, you do not want any bleeding. Bleeding is when the paint can get behind the tape and it makes a yucky mess, all right? All right, now we're ready to do some water. So our water is gonna be more of a turquoise color. So come down to the palette and we'll have a look at what colors we're going to use. <laughs> Now we're going to make this water simple but effective, okay? So on my palette now, I'm starting off with flowing white paint, okay? I've got phthalo turquoise, There's the, you can see the colour there, and I've got yellow oxide, alright? Now, I do want to put some retarder with the flowing white. I'm going to pick that up on an applicating brush to apply it to the canvas because I want to just get the canvas primed in a retarded flowing white paint. So give that a good mix. Now, like I've said before in series one, if you've got a damp climate, you might not need as much or any retarder. Your paint might stay wet longer. It's just keeping it wet longer for me here in the my dry climate where I am. Now, everything's dry. I'll just... Get this on there, pushing the brush right on, pick up some more and come all the way down to the bottom of the canvas, okay? Because everything here is going to have a bit of a merging blend to it. Now we can see this top colour underneath. That's not too bad because our horizon line is going to be darker than the foreground of the water. So now... This is quite thick still, okay? Whether you can see it or not, it's still quite thick on there. So what I'm doing is I'm brushing it into my board, my canvas board, and I'm really evening out that paint. So it's a thin film of a wet, retarded white surface ready for my colors. Now, if you've got another brush to apply, that's great, but I'm gonna use this same one, so I just gotta go and wash it. Now, we're gonna pick up the phalo turquoise. Now, I think just the I just want the littlest a bit of retarder in that one. And I want to map where I want my water because I want it sort of, let's say, cascading on the beach there like so. That's what I've got in my mind. So I want to 
paint that down to there. So let's get this right across the horizon line. The less you muck around with this, the better your job will turn out because the more you muck around with acrylics, they can start chalking up and jamming up on you. Now I'm going to put my brush on its edge to get this bit here, sweeping it horizontally, okay, like that. That's roughly where I want it. And we've already got a lighter tone. I'll get a pick up some of the white just in that brush that's left over on the palette there and I'll sweep some bands through there as well just like that let's get some on there so we can see it you can stamp them on we've got it on there like that okay now I want to wipe this brush I've just wiped it I haven't washed it and I'm gonna just pull this across the ocean there so to speak and we've got some light and dark bands now see here okay let's put a bit of a dark band there I've picked up some of the thalo turquoise on the edge of my brush and we can probably just stamp it on like that where we want some darker mainly in the horizon area that'll do wipe that brush wipe it like a gentleman and then come across and pull that through see that paint is all wet that's what's allowed that to happen okay and that's it do not muck with it that's all you need to do for the ocean out there that's a little bit scratchy there I'm gonna there we go now we have our yellow oxide ready to go and some more white flowing paint if I want to lighten it. And I've just added a bit of raw umber there just so as I can get some darker aspects in this sand. I'm just going to add the littlest bit of retarder to my yellow oxide so it'll work like that blue turquoise did in the water for me. Now we're going to put this on. I'm chiseling it onto my applying brush like so. Look at that, eh? Where are we? Can you see that? There we go, it's chiseled on there, nice and sharp. Why I do it sharp, you've got, like see here, I can, I'm gonna sweep it against that blue. Okay, there we go. And then bring it down, I'll get over here a bit, I've missed a bit of paint there. I'm just getting the edge of the brush where are we the edge of the brush there like that and I'm hitting this edge here blending it down a bit just so I can sweep it through so it's a nice soft now see the sand we might want to just darken up a bit so let's get a bit on the corner and chisel it up just on one one side of one corner okay raw umber and work out where you might want some dark sand probably just like that now the other side that you didn't touch let's just sweep that through as well I'm gonna wipe that brush like a gentleman just wiping it on a rag let's hope I don't get any blue in there yeah I've got to wash it okay I've washed that brush let's push all this darker shades through that sand Now I want to pick up a bit of white just on there and maybe add some white elements next to the dark elements, okay? Wipe your brush. I'm just wiping it on a rag just so I can pull those lighter bits through so the sand's got some light and darks in there, okay? There we go. That was very easy. Now, like I said, we're keeping this simple. You can have darker shadows in this water to indicate low-lying reefs under the surface. I want to get some of this yellow oxide 
I'm just getting it on the corner of the brush because to me, where this light's meeting the sand, it's just too, I want to sort of scatter it a bit, have something in there, just, just like that, all right? That's all I needed to do. After washing that same brush, that I, I want to pull that and sink it into the watercolour there, okay? There we go. Now we've got a good brush, it's still clean. Now I'm just going to show you how just to have a breaking wave here, something simple. You can add this or you cannot, it's up to you. Now I'm going to grab myself a flat brush, okay? Just a flat brush like this. I'll just dampen it a bit and wipe the water off it. And I want to pick up some of the phalo turquoise. I'm chiseling it on there, just like so. Now we've got this brush ready to drag it and this brush ready to apply. Now I want to say have a breaking wave somewhere here. So I'm going to stamp, just stamp on, let's say from a from nothing, come a bit higher, keeping the bottom of it reasonably horizontal and just do that. And you can probably turn the brush around and then finish this side off into a point as well. This is, you can detail this, but I'm keeping this simple for the any beginner to pull this type of painting off, okay? So we put that down and we just want to pull that dark through there as well. But don't kill it and wash it away. It's softened it, okay? That's all you need to do. Now, the good thing about this, we're going to have three series. One, the sky, two, the water, and third, the foreground. Keep all those series in your arsenal. So when you want to do a scenery, you can use these aspects, all the same things in them, but laid out differently, all right? Work on your sky and just concentrate on doing your sky for one day. You don't have to do a painting in one sitting, okay? Art is going to last a lifetime, so you don't have to try and get it done within a minute. It can take you a couple of days to a week if you really want to, even though it's a basic painting, all right? But this is going to be basic, but just have a look about it that's not so basic looking, okay? It's just going to give it that little bit of a wow factor, or like I've said before, Lots of bullshit effect, all right? Something that makes people go, boo, shit, that is beautiful. That's what I want people to see in your work. And doing it this way is achievable, okay? So we can all have fun doing it. I'm getting excited because I want to take that tape off and it's like, you know, we're going to change the picture all up. So let's take that tape off, all right? I just got to wet my gloves so the tape don't stick. So come over here. Now with pulling tape off, Virtually fold it back on itself and you're cutting that this tape is cutting the painted edge That's the best way to do it. Okay Don't do it up like this because you can it can pull a skin off the edge there and make a bit of a mess And you'll be sort of disappointed in your work So we're going to get this off there like so nice and easy And we have our horizon line with a bit of pollution in the background okay now we're ready to detail the water and then the water will be done now I need this to dry just a little bit I want the paint just to be tacky but while I'm waiting for that I just want to show you some brushes here okay now in my part one series I talked about if you live in America or England or Europe or somewhere I can send you these brushes okay my son informed me when I was editing it, it was too late, the editing was done, it was uploading. These are the brushes you get, but you actually get two packets, two packets of these for the 45 Australian dollars, okay? And how this can help you is there's nothing better than when you're doing a painting and down here, look at this down here, I've got all my blending brushes here, and then you're blending something and it's getting all clogged up, and instead of trying to race and beat the clock, you can just whack that down and pick up another smaller one for a smaller cloud or somewhere appropriate, whack that down and pick another one up, clean that as you go and blend. So you always got blending brushes on hand ready to blend for you. Then when you've done all your blending, 
you can stop. You don't have to try and wait and race against time before the paint dries. You have time then to go out and wash all your brushes. So that's another benefit of having all these brushes. Now you get four of these size. That's a two inch brush, okay? You get four of those. What's the next size down? Um, here, you get, how many of those you get? You get two of these. This is a one and a half inch brush. And the good thing about these for blending is that's a two inch brush, but look at the surface area, how wide that is. It's very narrow compared to what I use there. You can see the difference, okay? So this, this one here is soft. They're beautiful and soft. If that was brand new and I'm a woman, I would put that in powder and I'd powder my face up. It's that soft and blending, but it's got stability. It's not going to fumble and crumble at the knees and go, oh, I can't do it. It's got, that's the aspects about this brush that I like. So something like this, if you're going to blend like this, God help you, all right? Anyway, now we're going to detail this water. I just wanted to get that through about the brushes, okay? And be sure to message me in Facebook. Add me as a friend if you're not already to get the ball going and getting you those brushes if you're out of Australia. All right. Now for detailing the water, I want a small fan brush. So this is going to be used to stamp our white paint on. And you want a small flathead brush that's something good for blending. All right, that's going to just blend. Get yourself something like this or make it up. Get a brush and tease it so it's like that. Because a brush like this, if you want to paint and blend the way I do, this is worth having in your arsenal. So now... We're going to just, let's do the wave out there. So I'm going to pick up this titanium structured, good quality white paint. that has got no retarder or water in it. Okay, I've chiseled it on the end there. And I'm going to say like this wave here, I want to come from that dark bit onto it and over the top. That's how easy it is. So from it and over the top. Give it some pulls and drags if you want. Just like that. Okay. Now this one here will do the same. But before we do that, I want to grab this little brush and see, not this edge towards the dark, the other edge towards the top, the top edge of that. I want to lightly, horizontally blend that and sink it so just like that. I don't know if this camera's picking that up, but I'm touching it very lightly because this paint, the blue watered paint, is still wet. Okay. And I want to put just some sort of white. See, I'm just dancing that on. All right. Wipe that brush. The little one and very very lightly we're going to go crossways but we're sort of stamping it and jamming it on and teasing it horizontally in all that water there so it just looks like there's movement beyond that wave but we're not killing the deep colors as well at the same time just like that how's that look i'm just going to have a look in my monitor in a minute i'm happy with that see i want to bring it out there now wash your applicating brush and we'll do this other wave. Like I showed you in part one, I've got a washing tub and I've got a rinsing tub. So I'm just going to wash that in there. Okay, that's my dirty water and I want to rinse it in there. And I've just got paper towels here to dab it dry. And the best way is to squash it between a few. That's really dry. Okay, now we're going to do this wave now. So we're going to come off there over the top, load it up again, keep that paint nice and white, give some action in there. It's just a distant wave, but it's not detailed, but it's going to look like a wave to anybody looking at your painting, okay? There we go. Grab your blending brush again and blend the top of that lightly, just lightly, so you're putting a bit of a spray and a mist on the top of that wave there. 
destroy, wipe your brush as you go. All right. I want to get some just over here in front of it, just like that. It's going to create water movement within our scene there, just in front of that wave. This is, doesn't have to be detailed with big thick soap wash. How's that looking in the monitor? See, I'm happy with that. And that's how easy it is. Learn how to dance your brush across your canvas. So we've got some basic, simple waves. Now everybody's painting's different. Work out how you want your foam washing against the sand. You don't want it just coming to the sand. You do want it washing onto the sand. But I'll start from the inside water first because there's... And try not to do them like W's, okay, or U's. Try and give it some movement, but keeping it... I'll come off the page and then, then in. Give it, keeping it horizontal. We'll do a section at a time. So you put that on. Now we're only doing the top edge and dancing that top edge into the water like that, on and off and moving, on and off and moving. So, so you're creating another dollop of foam there. You want to leave the nice solid edge there, mainly when we get close to the front of the painting. So we'll get that like that. Can I have a look at that? Yeah, that's looking good, Ian. So we've created different swirls coming in. Now we'll do some just over here as well. So we'll sort of put some, try and keep the bottom of it, the bottom of it undotted, if you know what I mean. Just like that, put that down, and we'll blend this. Just the top of it, the top half, not the bottom half. Leave the bottom half solid. You're tearing this back into the ocean there and giving some movement. There was movement in the station as the word was passed around. There's movement on your canvas as the paint was splashed around, said Ian Harris from Australia. All right, look at that. Beautiful, it's like another wave coming in. It's like, oh, I need my boogie board. I've got to get on that. Now I'm thinking, I don't want things just coming and stopping. I want them coming from off the, the painting. So here's another wave coming in, like so. Like I said, try and keep the bottom from being dotty, but keep it bright and vibrant. So if anything, I'm going to show you on my palette the movement you need to do. Now we're going to wash this brush because it's full of all that blue and we're going to do the same again. We're going to dance this back into the ocean and it's going to get more, you'll see more of the detail here because it's closer to us. Now I can see that being a wave there. I don't want to bring this blending all the way under it. I want to keep some of that just to create the sense of a wave there. Don't have things just stop them, push them and blend them out. Just so they don't look like a little stump of an unfinished cloud or a wave or something like that. And we're leaving the bottom sharp and we're just sort of twisting that into the movements of the water there. See what we've got? It looks like soapy water washing up on the beach. Now we're going to quickly do some over this side. Come off the page there. Come up here. Just like that. Quickly put it down and start blending just the tops. And like I said, I've got to show you on my palette the, the, the best way to do this brush movement. All right, look at that. It just kills it. Kills it in a good way. It's given your painting a beautiful bullshit effect. Okay. 
Now I'm just picking up the phalo turquoise just to show you in the colour. Like there's our wave danced onto our or our water splashing onto the sand. And the movements you want to bleed this bit back into the water are like this. It's I'm sort of like going on, on, flick, on, on, flick, wherever, flicking, just like that. But your brush isn't got as much paint on it and these sitting softer are giving us this look like you've seen me do just earlier on, okay? All right, we've pretty much finished the uh, water whitewashing onto the sand there. And um, now we can just detail the shadow underneath this whitewash here as well. What's this one you doing? G'day boy, how you going? <laughs> what are you up to? Hey? Is that paint as well? What's this one? Oh, this is just part two of um, part um, three series. So I'm just showing them the water bit here now. Well, the first part, the sky? Yeah, yeah, there was a sky. What's the third part going to be? Just the foreground. Big right. tree and some elements there. All of you that are familiar with Reese. Here he is here, just popped in and said hello to me. Check out his YouTube channel. We will leave a link in the description below. And what are you doing? Just beginning and showing them your journey, aren't you? Yeah, just sort of starting off. I didn't have any experience a month ago and sort of progressing and seeing how my skills evolve over time. Pretty happy so far. I'm about to do another painting now. What are you going to do, you know? No, I don't know yet. It's always a trouble what subject to paint, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> get stuck. You know what you can do? While I'm here, you can whack that kettle on and make your father real happy. Eh? Or a tea or coffee? Um, you might have a Milo actually. Can Milo. you go backwards and forwards? Yeah. Yeah, I'll have a Milo. Oh. Good on you, son. All right, enough of that. All right, now we're going to get on to putting some shadow under our washing onto the sand. All right, so we need a script liner. And you want the paint reasonably damp so you can virtually wiggle and twist it out with your script liner, okay? Come down here and we'll have a look. Okay, so we still have our raw umber on here and I've got a script liner. Um, I don't know what number it is because I've got that much paint on the handle, but it's about that thick. It's not important how thick or th what number the brush is so long as it's visually the thickness you want. Now we're gonna get some water, and I'm gonna just spray in front of that, mist it in front of there. So I'm gonna twist the brush into the water, and then we're gonna start pulling some of this dark raw umber onto the brush. And you want it like that. Then get your hand steady but nervous, and you just wanna lightly come under that edge there, nice, and twist the brush as you go. Okay, take your time with this. The more time and pride you put into this, the more people are gonna go wow at your paintings. All right, so look at that. I'm getting a bit of mileage out of that one little dip. I'm twisting it as I go. It might not look like it, but it's getting twisted. If I didn't twist it, the paint won't run as much and have as much legs on it, all right? Now we're gonna do another bit. Let's just put the very littlest out here. Not nothing, ooh, nothing too big just under these brighter areas just to signify some death out there not death depth now I want to get this bit here so I go there I'm twisting it nervously this is all you got to do you don't need to muck around with so many different colors and tones and shades it's just simple all right See what that's done? It's sat that water onto the sand. Now we're gonna to come to this bit here. Just get your brush on there. It's child's play once you've done it a few times and you'll think, why couldn't I do that before? Put time and effort into your work. Someone once said to me, Ian, the more you put into art, the more you get out of it. And it's true. And the person that told me that back in 2012 was Wilson Bickford. He's a guy I followed on YouTube to get started and he motivated me to get to where I am today. Okay, we're just darkening up some of this. Hang on a minute, Reese has got me more. Oh, Hang on a minute, I'll just, and see where this corner is. I want to sort of create a bit of darkness there so it looks like a sheet's been lifted up and there's depth under there. Hang on a minute, Reese. And we'll just twist that there. Working on the colours in the painting, now I'm bringing up some of that Thalo turquoise, the same way, wet. And the wave out here, I want 
with this darker color in it. I don't want that brown under there. I want the, the darker watercolor. So we'll just sort of easily get some darkness across here. Prop yourself up, set yourself up, get comfortable, have yourself a Milo or a cup of tea, get things real comfortable. The more you're comfortable in the mind, the better you can execute your work. And we'll probably, I don't know if it'll work or not, that, that's pretty dark out there already. We might be able to bring some darkness there. It doesn't really need it. I could see just a little bit here and then that'll do it. See, the tinier these can be, the better it's going to look. And also, I said we don't want to detail these waves, and look at me, I'm bloody detailing them. There's some, get the little blending brush, I better sink them back. Because sometimes you get a lot of dirty seaweed turning up at the bottom of a decent sized wave. All right, so let's have a look at that. There's our water all shadowed up. All right, I'm going to replace that brown with this blue if I can. It just sits things down where they should be. Reese has got me my Milo ready. This is going to dry now and um, we'll just put some distant islands in the horizon line and this will be the end of part two. Enjoy. On the palette I've got some cadmium yellow, forest green and yellow green. I'm only going to probably use a little bit of that if not nothing. This is the base of what I'm going to do with the islands and this is the highlight. Okay, So we're going to use two brushes. I'm using my flathead and my little scenery slash blending brush. Now I want to get a little bit of water in there just to give it some movement off the brush. And while I'm using a flathead, I can keep the bottom straight like that instead of having this messy thing give me a messy bottom in my water. I learnt that off my other painting. And then I can bring this up and then get it the way I want, okay? Now, on your horizon, you don't always want to put an island on the very tip. You can bring it in, like I'm going to bring this one, let's say, about here. So I'm going to stamp this along reasonably straight. You can move it, but keep your line straight, okay? Now I'm going to thicken it up. And then we're going to... There, the rest of it can be done with my little scenery brush. Now, I needed that to get the bottom reasonably accurate and then we're gonna bring this up it's back again like I've, I got inspired by Hawaiian Hawaii so this will be if anything in a Hawaiian scene now the top of this hopefully my head isn't in the way we want it sort of hairy and feathered but given it that sort of islandly look you get in Hawaii and just come off your painting with it don't come down off your painting with it. Come off your painting with it. It just looks better in a lot of people's opinions. Even if they don't realise it, subconsciously they see a better looking picture to look at. Okay. Now there's our basis for a simple distant island in forest green. Now watch what a bit of water does. I've just come off the canvas. Got that in the water there, right? Damp it off. And this is just going to put some very subtle but lighter tones within that tree slash island over there, okay? It's just not one solid green. Can you notice that or not? Now I've got to wash that brush and also dry it a bit. Now I want to pick up some of the yellow green on my... little see that it's all soaked up because I've just washed it can you see that I don't want to go and put that on there like that it's gonna look like nonsense so I'm gonna wipe that okay and then pick up some of the paint without it being so frothy now these islands need that ridge of darkness under there which is probably about 
that much from the bottom okay now this forest green is still wet so as I stamp this yellow green on it is going to kill some of that lightness so now we're dancing all this through the yellow not yellow the forest green bring that bottom up as well leaving some darks there darkness in these distant things adds depth depth can you see this how it looks stampy I'm going to get this paint off the brush it's mixing with that wet forest green so it's not so loud see how loud it was here and I'm going to wipe the brush and kind of flatten those bright bits back down just like that okay and like I've said before if you've gone too bright pick up the darker color and stamp it back in there okay so we want to distinctively now get the bits in front and behind each other just like that see what I've done there now we're gonna minimally highlight it picking up some of the yellow on there I've just pulled a bit away and see how much is on my brush not much and get it on the edge I want to do the stamping with it's a bit dry let's see how that transfers we just want it's very little not too much at all That yellow is too bright there. That's all right, but I'm going to kill it down a bit because I don't want to destroy the clarity of colours I've got going here. Just picked up some yellow green again and I'm going to push some of that back, some of that bright yellow. I'm just looking in my monitor there for referencing that's okay now I'm going to do this island first so we want to sit that island down into the water so we're going to grab a small fan brush like I had before this is very soft it's not a, like a hog bristle real thick so I want to wet the white I'm going to wet my brush on there and I want to chisel some of this white onto this brush now grab yourself something to support yourself on and you want to just sit that down into the water there just like that we can come out a bit now what I'm going to do because that's very loud looking I've washed that same brush I don't want to destroy that dark area I want to hit the white and sort of tease it into the water so you're washing that white down it's mixing into the blue slightly that's why I didn't want to dry this water totally with my hairdryer it's just sitting that water down from the island giving some movement around there there was movement on the canvas as the paint was pushed around here we go how's that looking in the monitor there that's all right my camera wasn't on so we just put another one in the distance this one's virtually sitting on the horizon line so it's going to be further away than this one and we're going to pale it down a bit make it more pale to give it that like you're looking through a net curtain look okay you don't want it the same color so we got it there now we're going to make it pale now I've picked up some a little bit of phalo blue and white and I've mixed it with that paint on my brush okay and that's created the atmosphere in the air between this our eyesight and way back over there so now we're going to put this onto that island because this is way back in the distance you wanted a different tone than the ones closer to you and it'll make sense into the painting so now we're just going to add the littlest bit of water on our brush just to break that paint up and give it different you could see these stamp marks in with your normal eyesight picking up that small fan brush again and we're just going to lightly put some distant water against that island very lightly okay wash the brush with water and wipe it and the damp brush itself will kill that brightness 
of all that white. It's sort of going to make it translucent in colour. Just enough to kill it, but still give us the illusion that there's reef and water movement around that distant island over there. Okay, we're going to end this series, this one here, with a bigger one probably about here coming out there. I want to get the bottom in and then I can use my scenery slash blending brush to stamp it in. So we'll pick up the forest green and work out, I'll put a head on that island. Back to our yellow green, look how I've stamped that right in there. It's not thick and gluggy though. And we're going to be stamping it onto this wet forest green. So start at the top and play it through. And it's going to start slowly mixing. Okay. This way it's making the colours a bit more natural looking the way nature would have intended them because they're mixing but if you dried that green which you can do you'd want to have to mix this the exact tone you want it but this is just an easy way to stamp it on and it's mixing and it's kind of just be borderline before it's starting to mud up so to speak okay so this one can be a bit more detailed because it's closer and we've got to remember this has now become sort of a small cape, so we've got to make some good water movements in there to make it look believable and realistic, okay? So that's kind of mixed up with that forest green, okay? How's that looking in the monitor? That looks good. I'm happy with that. Now the same way I've loaded up the yellow, mid cadmium yellow on there. I do not want too much of this. I just want bits to create what's in front and what's behind. But very lightly how's that is that if that's too vibrant which i think it is i'm just going to kill that into some yellow green we put some yellow green into that mid yellow and it's just not so loud now so i want to come in front of this bit here you see it's that simple see what i've done and don't just leave a line there sort of taper it in and then do something else in front of there. But for God's sake, like I do, don't overkill it. A bit over here. Leaving the darks in there. That'll do it. Let's leave it alone. Now just to show you, I'm, I was using the little fan brush. I'm going to a flathead brush now. I'm going to chisel this into a sharp edge. Because I find when the fan brush is getting wet, it's opening up. So this is nice and chiselled. And we want to just lightly get some water against the island there, sitting the dark colours back. Okay, not too much out there. And we want to get some movement on the canvas as the paint was passed around. Just there like that. Now we're going to wipe this brush, wash it, okay? Look at that, I washed it and I squashed it between two tissues and it's nice and sharp, but it's also damp. Now we're going to use that dampness, it's going to pick up some of the other colours and contaminate that white a bit. And it's just making, we're just killing that loudness against the, the island there. Still a bit bright. All is not lost. Unless you're Robert Redford stuck out on the ocean in a yacht that doesn't work. Okay, now see how that, you might think, oh, Ian, Ian, what'd you do, mate? What did you do? Well, <laughs> some of that is a bit bright. We just pick up a bit of this colour that's left on our palette there and just trace that back through where you might think it's a bit too dark and we're still creating water movement against there 
I'm happy with that. That's the end of series two. So we've done our sky in one, we've done our water and horizon in number th two. Number three will be the foreground. Okay, be sure to check out all the links in the description below and click on the appropriate one that suits you. There's one for my Facebook, my Patreon page, Reese's video channel, and, and about those brushes. If you want the brushes, contact me through Facebook Messenger and payments are done through my PayPal account, okay? If you like what I've done here for you today, you tell your friends, but if you don't, you tell everybody, all right? Goodbye, good luck, good on ya.